Hey guys, VBAD here with another V plays, and we are hopping into the IL-1. Why are we hopping into the IL-1? Well, because they're selling it again. And it looks like they're selling it for, I think it's like 24 bucks for the one bundle and 27 and some change for another. And they throw in a couple of tier three aircraft. I don't know if that's really worth it. Uh, it is a multi-role. The IL-1 is an interesting aircraft in that uh, a lot of people see the IL and they think that it's a ground attacker, even though it is a multi-role. It's also a premium, and the thing has pretty decent amount of hit points. Like 440 hit points at tier 6 is pretty beefy, some decent damage resistance. And the 223s are actually pretty good as well. Uh, it does carry two bombs with a fairly quick reload, and these are, these 23s have some decent range. 2400 feet optimal, which means they can actually fire a little bit further than that so i'm actually gonna hold on to the munitions a little bit and we're really here hoping that somebody oh sweet they got some good damage in maybe maybe we can pull this off not quite enough oh oh i think we did i think we got it with those two little bombs that might have been enough <laughs> this is a really good example of all the times that i've told people hey you know what Look out for leaving any part of a site behind when you're in a bomber or ground attacker because somebody can come in with two relatively small bombs. I mean, these things are Fab 100s. They're like equivalent to maybe a 250-pound bomb. They're not much to speak of. Looks like Cloud Reigns is here. That's another OWSS character. Uh, yesterday we flew with Prenzlau, and Cloud Reigns is one of the... Uh, more notable characters over there as well. So let's go for the Focke Wolf. We've got some maneuverability and some decent firepower and range. And I've actually opted for the... There we go. Reinforced bowl carriers because it allows me to be able to get more rounds out. Uh, again, it's that hit scan mentality of just getting more rounds out on the enemy and trying to get the damage. So actually, I think I'm going to go towards their garrison. We've taken the airfield, we're about to pick up that other airfield, and they're working on the military facility. We'll uh, throw... Let's do that. You know what? This is probably a bad move, but we're going to go for it. Maybe we can showcase the range and resiliency here in a combination. You can see the damage is stacking up. Already 300 plus, 400 damage. We're really kicking this thing up above the altitudes that it feels comfortable. Look how long we can fire before it starts to really affect us. And we only took mm, a little over 100 damage there going up against the nasty tail gunner of a B-17G. And that was player controlled. So let's drop some altitude and continue with our original plan. And look at those, look at those little bombs on there. <laughs> Enough to be able to help with some site capture. So this is a multi-role. It's going to fall more in line with what I would equate maybe the British multi-roles as being, uh, but does sacrifice some speed in order to get more hit points. It's going to be a lot more uh, with a low air-to-ground ordnance payload, but fairly quick reload and the ability to get some decent fire out on the enemy. I'm actually going to use these guns to take out that gun. While we may be a multi-roll, we can still throw some rounds on the, on the ground here, on the deck. I see you. Let's get around on him. There's that nice little bit of a kick on that turn. And that's that hit scan we were talking about before. These 23s are no slouches when it comes to damage. And we've got two bombs here, so let's throw a couple of softening blows here. And then we'll let the bombs finish it off. And there we go. We've achieved our objective of picking up this site very textbook maneuver here and it has a lot less to do with the aircraft itself and a lot more to do with the tactics uh, you'll notice i'm not really getting into the heart of any of the big fights i'm not dogfighting over an airfield unless i knew i was going to have some help cloud rains was over at the airfield or the air base when we first started this off when we were heading over in that direction and going for the military facility was a calculated risk because i figured mostly bombers and higher altitude aircraft would be up above me and i might have been able to sneak in some air to ground shots 
So with that, we're still going to gun it over here. And we're able to get decent enough speed in a straightaway. Getting up to a little over 300 miles an hour. Again, not too bad for the tier. I see the B-17 up there. But I want to put some hurt into the IL-1. And there's that range and that sustained damage to be able to get that locked in. Oh, I see you. There's a lot of aircraft inbound on this position. Let's go for the hurricane. Got him on fire. Let's kick on the pneumatic assist. The fire finished him off. And we are still in range of the yak here because of the range of the guns. So we got a lucky hit there. Not quite locked in. Now we'll come back in on him. Come on, can we get this? I don't know why he didn't aim right for me. He could have got those big guns on me. But we'll punish that mistake. There we go, another one down. Ooh, Fog Wolf up high and we don't have any boost left. What else do we have for optional targets? I'm going to start heading towards their airfield just to try and get into a target-rich environment. But as things are looking right now, we seem to be doing all right for ourselves. Cloud is on the B-17, so I'm not too worried about it. We'll just let him finish that target off. Maybe we can... No, nope, I was like, maybe we can get some assist shots in, but uh, that ain't going to happen. A lot of things are leaving the mil the enemy airfield, which is what I was kind of planning on. Slow. This guy has no airspeed left. Got him. Looks like a heavy tried to go for me there. And now I've just put the Hurricane Mark II in front of me. Nice job. Loud. Saving my butt. Okay. Okay. Let's go and see if we can pay back this P-38. We're going to burn a bunch of our boost here in the climb. This may be a failed endeavor. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, stalled. We got a few points out of him, though. Really high up for an aircraft like this. It, again, it doesn't have the altitude performance, and it really doesn't have the airspeed. We might be able to push it up a little bit more with a Brit multi-roll. But maybe we can get a little bit more damage out here before the end of the match. Not quite finished. We can finish that guy, though. And... I actually wanted to do the ram because I wanted to showcase how resilient this aircraft is when it comes to its overall hit points. And really good damage resistance. Are we getting a second chance here? Ah, the bullets are kind of going all wonky on us. Nope, not quite. Alright, let's throw up the GG. Apparently we have caps lock on. Uh, we ended up getting a Lambert off of that, and we picked up Conqueror, 10,000 points and some change. Uh, again, this isn't me trying to sell wargaming products to you guys. The IL-1 is an interesting enough plane, and for those that are out there that like to collect aircraft that are only off offered every so often, this is one of those opportunities, but I wouldn't go out of my way to spend a bunch of money on this thing. It does come with a thousand gold and a unique paint job, yada, 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 but this is what this aircraft does it is a multi-role fighter that again sacrifices altitude sacrifices some of its airspeed but still sports pretty decent maneuverability a 10.5 second turn time is good for an altitude fighter for a multi-role that's great multi-roles are lucky to be able to get into that 10 second realm so it does very well for itself. And even though it seems like only two guns isn't going to be a lot, the fact that they're 23s and they have a much better optimal distance allows you to be able to get those guns on target earlier. And we kind of played to that a little bit. We only got eight kills and that match went a little bit quickly. Obviously, we had a specialized key 102 and a very seasoned pilot so i didn't need to worry too much about him taking certain sectors but we were ourselves 
able to sneak in and aid in capturing that central portion of the uh, site at the military facility. In fact, uh, where is it? The special ground target. It's right there. We ended up picking up the special ground target so we can verify that my two piddly little bombs were enough to be able to snag that little spot there. Uh, and we were able to take out a couple other structures when we went over the garrison and we took out an air defense aircraft there. So a great little assassin and we also showcased how you can ram with it as well and this is where you see it the survivability one the damage resistance is 60. that's a very high damage resistance that's like heavy fighter damage resistance in fact it's almost like bomber damage resistance like let's pull up the Falcon wolf 190a5 real quick there we go and we'll check his survivability 52 compared to 60. also the fire resistance is 80. The only reason I have Firefighter on this crew is because it's a premium aircraft, so I can put any Soviet pilot in here that I would like, so I just threw in the LA-160 pilot just because. Again, this is a very standard complement of skills that I would have on most of my aircraft anyways, uh, and yeah, it, it just it has the hit points. Again, the survivability. 300 hit points on the Focke Wolf 190 at this tier. 440 on the IL-1. So if you guys see an IL-1, be aware that one, it's not a ground attacker. Two, it's a very nimble multi-role aircraft, despite what you may be thinking when you see IL, you're like, oh no, it's an illusion. It's gonna be really slow and sluggish. Uh, it's slow, but it's definitely nimble. And it also suffers an altitude performance and it really can't push it up too much above that because it just doesn't have the horsepower to go along with it. And that's representative of the uh, climb rate at 339. Uh, it can hold its own and it does all right, but it just it doesn't want to get above that 3,000 foot mark before it really starts to become a labor. Anyways, guys, that is the IL-1. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.